Welcome to the channel. Happy Halloween. What do I got for you? <laughs> I'm ready. So let's get right into it. Let's go and show. Enjoy the episode. It's haunting destiny. Below. Number 10. Duntalum Castle Ruins, the Isle of Sky. This ruined castle rises from the rugged coastline of Trottenish, Sky's most northerly peninsula. The last living inhabitants of the castle, the MacDonald clan, were reportedly driven out by the spirits in 1730. At night, it is said you can hear a woman's screams amidst the ruins. This is believed to be the ghost of a housemaid who dropped her young charge from a high window and paid the price for her tragic mistake. Her voice is sometimes joined by the wails of Margaret, the spirit of a woman rejected by her husband. In the courtyard, the ghost of Donald Gormore wrestles with phantom enemies. His foe, Hugh MacDonald, haunts the dungeons, where he met his death by starvation. Number 9. The Drover's Inn, West Dumbartonshire. Travelling down to the mainland, the Drover's Inn, not far from Loch Lomond, may be worth a stopover, if you're feeling brave enough. Guests at the inn have often borne witness to ghostly happenings. You might hear the screams of a murdered Georgian man, Angus the Drover, on his nightly walkabout. <coughs> And don't be surprised if you wake to find a spectral family waving down at you, or spot a deceased regular sitting by the fireside. If you're easily spooked, perhaps avoid room 6. Overnight guests have often felt the presence of a drowned child, icy cold to the touch, and laid beside them in bed. Number 8. Whitby Abbey, Yorkshire. As the setting for Bram Stoker's Dracula, it's not surprising that this northern seaside town has a sinister reputation. St. Mary's Churchyard reportedly plays host to a traditional horse-drawn hearse, lit by torches and driven by a headless coachman. A crowd of spectral mourners complete the picture. The apparition is said to appear whenever a sailor from the town is buried within the grounds of the churchyard. On the cliff above, Whitby Abbey remains the favorite haunt of its founder, St. Hilda who has been spotted in an upper window. But if you hear a cry for help, that may be the spirit of Constance de Beverly, a young nun once bricked up inside the abbey walls. Number 7. Ancient Ram Inn, Watson Under Edge, Gloucestershire. Nestled in the heart of Gloucestershire, this 12th century inn was built where two ley lines meet, on the site of a possible pagan burial ground. Visitors have often reported over 20 different apparitions, from a witch burned at the stake to a mounted Roman centurion. Family home since the 1960s. Evidence suggests that this was a pagan burial site, the scene of both witchcraft and human sacrifice. The ghost of a monk regularly haunts the bishop's room and has driven out guests in the middle of the night. Heavy footsteps have been heard walking across the floor when there's no one here. You may hear the wailing of a priestess or encounter a lost little girl in the basement, but you better watch out for the succubus, who's been known to push guests onto the bed. Front room. This is where John Humphreys has been attacked several times by the incubus and succubus. Number 6, Skirt Mountain Inn, Monmouthshire. In the shadow of Skirt Mountain stands the oldest inn in Wales. A pleasant stop for an afternoon drink, but a frightening place to spend the night if you're attuned to the paranormal. The upper floor was once a courtroom where over the years 182 people were condemned to death by hanging. 182 people lost their lives to the hangman's noose. The sentences were carried out on the stairs of the inn. You can still see the marks from the rope scored into the hanging beam. found rope burn marks around their necks where previously there were no marks at all. It seems as if some nasty spirits have been left behind. Guests have woken in the night feeling like they've been strangled. One woman even fled her room with wet hair, screaming that an unseen presence had held her underwater in the bath. 
she was really distressed, absolutely hysterical. Number five, Treasurer's House, Yorkshire. Treasurer's House is a National Trust property in Yorkshire, dating from the 12th century, but the spirits that haunt the place are even older. Harry Martindale was 18 when he was called out to fix the boiler in the cellars of the house. Imagine his surprise when a trumpet sounded and a stream of Roman soldiers, looking rather tired and dirty, marched straight through the cellar wall. And I saw that a figure had come out of the wall. What I was looking at was a top of a helmet. The engineer fled upstairs where he met the curator of the house. Taking one look at his face, the man guessed, by the look of it, he'd seen the Romans. This is just one example among many sightings of the soldiers. Archaeologists have since discovered that the cellar floor was built 18 inches above an old Roman road. And the Roman road runs 18 feet below the ground. Number four, Pluckley, Kent. According to the Guinness Book of Records, the sleepy village of Pluckley is the most haunted in England. There have been reported sightings of 14 different ghosts. You may catch a glimpse of the old schoolmaster who was found hanging in his rooms and now haunts the school grounds. Or hear the screaming man who met his untimely death at the brickworks. Are you the screaming man who haunts these woods? I'm going to take a picture and I request that you show yourself in front of my camera. The woods are supposedly full of phantoms, as is the local pub, where the dogs bark at unseen figures and avoid one of the upstairs rooms. Even the dog has got her suspicions. <laughs> Doesn't like going upstairs. A spectral carriage has also been seen trundling down the village main street. And then it just disappeared into the night. I mean, I've heard of uh, Pluckley being haunted, but until we actually see that, I, I didn't really believe it until then. Number three, Pendle Hill, Lancashire. In 1612, 10 women were accused of practicing witchcraft during the notorious Pendle Witch Trials. They were sentenced at Lancaster Castle and put to death on Gallows Hill, high above the town. The day after the trial, the 10 convicted prisoners were brought to a place still known as Gallows Hill. It said that their presence and an abiding feeling of anger could still be felt in the surrounding area of Pendle. Separated from the Boland Fells by the River Ribble, Pendle Hill is dotted with small villages and farmsteads. But locals are wary of the hill at night, where ghostly figures have allegedly been spotted. The hill summit is also the site of an ancient Bronze Age burial ground, so perhaps the alleged witches are not the only restless spirits in this lonely place. Number two, the Tower of London. It's not surprising that this historical place of execution is thought to house its fair share of ghosts. And was originally built as a fortress for the king. But it's torture and executions that make this castle so haunted. In the tower's grim heyday, many memorable figures traveled through Traitor's Gate to live out their final days. It may have been months or years, but the end was usually the same. An appointment with the executioner. There are at least 13 ghosts thought to haunt the former palace. Across the ages, some have claimed to see the phantom forms of Anne Boleyn and the murdered princes. But more sinister are the unknown apparitions. The white figure on Tower Green, the faceless young woman in the Salt Tower, and the nameless thing that stalks the guards as they walk their rounds. Ghost stories or Victorian melodrama? Who knows? Number one, Culloden Moor, near Inverness. On the 16th of April, 1746, the Battle of Culloden Moor saw the slaughter of Bonnie Prince Charlie's army. The massacre of the Jacobites was followed by a brutal crackdown, and life for the Highlanders was never the same. Some say that the dead don't rest, even now. On the anniversary of the battle, the sounds of the fighting are said to be heard across the moor. Many visitors to the site have reported seeing a tartan-clad figure who speaks of defeat when approached. There have also been reports of a ghostly wounded Highlander. The area surrounding the graves is also ominously silent, or so it is claimed. The birds don't sing, and a sense of tragedy echoes down the years. 
With Halloween just around the corner, it's the perfect time for a virtual tour of some of the spookiest destinations in the USA. Looking for some haunted hotspots to check out this fall? Well, these are the top 10 real haunted places in America you can visit this Halloween. Emily's Bridge in Stowe, Vermont is a pretty picturesque bridge to get some nice fall season photos on, but it also has a reputation that's perfect for the Halloween season. So if you're looking for a spooky fall outing, this is a good option. Best part is it's free. Built in the mid 1800s, it's named after a young woman who's said to have suffered a tragic fate on her wedding day. The story goes that Emily was left at the altar and in her heartbreak took her own life on the bridge. Ever since, strange things have been said to happen on and around it. Some claim to see the figure of a young woman in a wedding dress wandering nearby, only there's no wedding happening and it's 2 a.m. in the morning. Others will hear soft sobbing or footsteps when no one else is around. If you're looking for a blend of scenic beauty and a possible ghost encounter this Halloween, Emily's Bridge is worth checking out. Well, you don't hear about haunted zoos very often, but uh, here we are. Yes, the Lincoln Park Zoo is rumored to be one of the most haunted spots in Chicago. Before it became a popular spot for families and animal lovers, this area was home to the Chicago City Cemetery. The cemetery was around from 1843 to 1859. It held the remains of over 35,000 people, and legend has it that as many as 12,000 bodies are still under the zoo till this day. So that kind of explains the whole haunted Zoo thing. Many people have experienced eerie things here. One of the most common sightings is of a ghostly figure dressed in Victoria era clothing. The apparition seems to appear out of nowhere, wandering through the park, right through animal enclosures, and then disappearing. Also a high probability that at least one of those sightings was just a very living person sneaking into an animal enclosure getting eaten by a gator or something. Just one possibility. One specific ghostly woman has been frequently spotted near the lion house, moving about as if she doesn't notice the visitors around her. It's also been seen in ladies' restrooms nearby where her reflection has been reported in the mirror, only to disappear when someone turns to look. People have also reported flickering lights and doors slamming shut on their own. So I didn't think I'd have a zoo on a Halloween destination trip through America, but again, here we are, something different. The Queen of Mary, now permanently docked in Long Beach, California, is one of America's most famous haunted locations. In 1934, this grand ocean liner operated as a luxury cruise ship, and it was used during World War II. There are tons of stories about the strange occurrences on board. Many will say they hear unexplained noises and cold spots, but one of the most famous spirits is said to be a young girl named Jackie, who reportedly enjoys playing in the ship's pool area. Guests have claimed to hear her laughter and even catch glimpses of her apparition. Another well-known ghost is that of a crew member who died in an accident in the engine room. People have reported hearing footsteps, voices, and machinery sounds when no one else is around. So, if you want to see the place for yourself, there are guided tours that take visitors through its most haunted areas. Next up, we have Savannah, Georgia. Yes, I'm talking about the entire town. Savannah is often referred to as one of the most haunted cities in America, along with New Orleans and Salem. It's easy to see why. The city's history is full of dark stuff, battles, deadly diseases, disasters. You have the siege of Savannah in 1779. Then the city was captured by General Sherman during the Civil War. The spirits of soldiers who died in these battles are said to be trapped in places like the Laurel Grove Cemetery. Some will even claim to see them roaming the streets. But it's not just soldiers that haunt Savannah. The city was devastated by a series of yellow fever epidemics in the early 1800s. In 1820 alone, the disease wiped out about a tenth of the population. That's a lot of people. There was also a deadly fire in 1820 which started in a stable and quickly spread, destroying hundreds of buildings. 1820 was just a bad year for them. But this wasn't the first time a horrible fire ravaged the city. There was a pretty devastating one in 1796 as well. The city is home to over 40 ghost tours that go deeper into all that stuff. Anyway, lots to see and do in Savannah around this time of year. The Adams Grove Presbyterian Church in Alabama. This historic Greek revival style church was built in 1853. Now, it doesn't operate as a church anymore and from what i've heard it's on private property so you may not actually be able to set foot in it yourself but creepy stuff is said to go on around it one of the supposed entities is the ghost of a former pastor said to stand in front of the church at night 
with his arms raised in prayer right before big storms, vanishing as soon as they arrive. Many claim to see other ghostly figures wandering around the church in nearby cemetery, which is considered one of the most haunted in Alabama. Another entity people will claim to see is a shadowy figure with dark red eyes. Others report hearing the sound of crying emanating from inside the empty church. And there are also stories of ghostly organ music. The Sheffield Island Lighthouse is an old Victorian style lighthouse built in 1868. It's a short ferry ride from South Norwalk, Connecticut. Really pretty sight to check out if you're just into the history, but if you want that added Halloween vibe, even better. The story goes that the lighthouse's original keeper died mysteriously while watching passing ships through a spyglass. His sudden death is still unexplained to this day, and many believe his spirit still lingers in the building. In 1991, an archaeologist working on the island reported some strange stuff going on. He claimed to hear music coming from the shores, distant cries for help, and the sound of a foghorn, even though there was no foghorn on the island at all. Many people believe these sounds could be attributed to the ghost of Captain Robert Sheffield, the island's original owner in the early 1800s, who had a love of unusual musical instruments. The Red Onions Saloon in Skagway, Alaska was built in 1898 during the Klondike Gold Rush. Originally, it was a brothel for miners and it was a very strange brothel. It used dolls to represent each woman working upstairs and each day, ten dolls would be placed on the bar. Customers would then choose one to indicate which lady was occupied. When the customer returned, the doll would go back to its sitting position on the bar, signaling that the worker was once again Available. The Red Onion is, of course, not a brothel anymore, but it still operates as a bar and a restaurant. What also remains, though, are those dolls and possibly some of the workers and guests from back in the brothel days. One of the most famous spirits is named Lydia, a former madame who a number of staff have reported encountering. Apparently, you can smell this lingering perfume scent in the room she used to work in, and if you're lucky enough or unlucky enough, you may even catch a glimpse of her. But Lydia is generally pretty friendly, especially towards women. She's known to water plants, caress people's faces, and leave behind also the smell of freshly cut lilacs. Guests have also snapped photos of orbs, white blurs, and even the faint outline of her face. But not all the spirits here are friendly. There's another ghost known as John. He leaves behind a scent as well, just not as nice as perfume or flowers. It's just his horrible B.O. He's also known to shove people down the stairs and fling open doors while staff are busy. The Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas is quite the building. It's elegant. It was built in 1886 and people from all over the world come here for all sorts of reasons. Tourists, obviously, weddings are hosted here, and folks interested in the paranormal. One of the most famous spirits said to haunt the Driscoll is its founder, Jesse Driscoll. Shortly after the hotel opened, Jesse ran into some financial problem. He ended up losing ownership of the hotel, the poker game, just after its grand opening. But his spirit has never left. Guests have seen him throughout the hotel, but especially in a room overlooking 6th Street and Brazos. One story tells of a man who woke up in the night to find a man standing by the window smoking a cigar. When he turned on the light, the figure just vanished. But the curtains were still swaying and cigar smoke was still in the air. There's also a painting on the fifth floor of a young girl with flowers in a letter. And it's said when you pass by the painting, you may feel a deeply unsettling presence. The Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs, Arkansas is often referred to as America's most haunted hotel. Hotel. Built in 1886, it served various purposes over the years. It started out as a hotel. It was also a college, a hospital. Many believe that the spirits of those who died here are still present. One of the most famous ghosts is a young woman named Theodora, who's often seen in a flowing white dress. Visitors have described her as a friendly spirit who appears to be watching over the hotel. It's also said to be the ghost of a former doctor who worked at the hotel when it was a hospital. Staff members have reported feeling his presence in the basement where he may have performed treatments on patients. This hotel also showed up in an episode of Ghost Hunters where the team claimed to capture a full body apparition. So why not stay for yourself? You can also hit up a ghost tour. Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia is a former prison that is now known as one of the most haunted locations in the States. It opened in 1829, being the first prison to implement solitary confinement. 
confinement. It closed in 1971, but since then, it's become a popular site for ghost hunters. You have tons of spirits here, former guards and inmates who died violently or lost their minds in solitary. During the Halloween season, though, the building transforms into a haunted attraction called Halloween Nights at Eastern State Penitentiary. You have a number of different haunts to walk through and then different Halloween themed activities. Looks like a pretty good time to me. I mean, a Halloween attraction inside a haunted prison, that makes for some pretty spooky atmosphere. So check the place out if you're looking for something to do this Halloween. And thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good one, guys.